Hello and welcome to the fourth round of the XRL European Super League highlights. We've got some great games on offer today and some crazy score lines. The start of our highlights will be our main game between Chelsea and Valencia at Stamford Bridge. Two unbeaten sides going into the league this season after the first three games. Could this stay the same or will there be someone losing that record? The other games from our league will be shown as well, including how Liverpool got on against fellow uh, Premier League opposition in Arsenal, as well as how PSG fared at home in the French capital to Manchester United. So firstly, we go to our main game between Chelsea and Valencia. XRL Bubbles has enjoyed a great start to the season, winning all three of his opening fixtures, whilst Valencia, managed by XRL Stewart, has had an equally good start to the season, just dropping a couple of points in their most recent game against Man City, which was a draw. The lineups look like this. So with Chelsea, they are running a 4-5-1 formation with Thibaut Courtois in goal. In front of him is Branislav Ivanovic, Kurt Zuma, Gary Cahill and Felipe Luis. In the midfield, we have Nemanja Matic, Fabregas, Eden Hazard, Cuadrado on the two wings and Oscar operating more as a central attacking midfielder, with Diego Costa up front on his own. Valencia are operating a 4-3-3 formation with Diego Alves in the goal, Antonio Barragan, Mustafi, Otamendi and Gea in the defence with Daniel Parejo, Enzo Perez, Javi Fuego as a three-man centre midfield with Piatti and Faguli on the wings with Rodrigo up front. Let's go to the box and join with Jeff Stelling at pitch side along with Martin Tyler and Alan Smith. Hello and welcome to this broadcast of this matchup. Today it's Chelsea against Valencia. Let's head for Stamford Bridge and evening kickoff and the floodlights shining down in West London. Here's your commentary team, Martin Tyler and Alan Smith. Well, a good result last time out, Alan they'll want to play that sort of way against the big rivals today. I'd be hoping to, but it uh, doesn't always pan out that way, does it? That was then and this is now. And he's got the ball well to set his team on the front foot by intercepting. Rodrigo. Dani Parejo. They've got to keep the ball better than this because it's just a giveaway to the opposition. And here's the shot. <laughs> they been saved, the defending team, by that offside. Rodrigo. Javi Fuego. Perez. Here's an opportunity, maybe. In with a chance. Oh, it's in there. And that has just lasered into the corner. Unstoppable. Cesc Fabregas. It's a quick break. Here's the chance. Made the save, but the ball's still there. Decent piece of defending when the danger was mounting. Super skills. Parejo. Pablo Piatti. Oscar. Here's Fabregas. He's led the ball to his, his ankle, but he has carried on. So I think it's unlikely to force him off the field. And Jeff showing he's right amongst it and knows what's going on down there. And the ball's got away from him. Diego Costa. Here's Fabregas. Baraga. It's a bit of a sticky scenario, this, for Chelsea. They wouldn't have expected to be behind at this stage of the game. They have got time in the second half to maybe put things right. Got to be! Oh, got in the way, great block. And now they've got a corner on the attack again, the team that's leading by one goal. And that's a very good save following the corner. Tournament started. It looks as though Diego Costa was going to give Spain a different element for their team. 
maybe to improve them even more. But unfortunately for him, the rest of the team uh, were past their best in the World Cup of 2014. Oh, in goes the cross. Oh, well reached by the keeper to turn it away. With this goal advantage, they've now got a corner. He's got a pass out to the player giving the width on this side of the field. Cuadrado. And it will go into the middle now. Diego Costa! The player hasn't had to move very far to get that ball. Danny Parejo. Pablo Piatti. And Valencia have uh, got a free kick here. The goalkeeper's got to it, but it's still in play. And here's the shot. It's a goal. And it's Valencia. What about that goal for Valencia, Alan? Uh, the keeper's pulled off a, a really good save, but that's when he needs the help of his defenders. Now it's 2-0. Nemanja Matic. And back it goes. Here's Fabregas. Diego Costa. And the shot's off. Well, the keeper got a touch to it to make the save gone out for a throw. Oscar. Here's the shot. Still in play here. It's going to be a throw here. They've got the ball rolling again straight away. Now, what's the referee Iglikowski? Going to do to deal with this incident. That's the way to win the ball back. What a chance here. Got to be. They've still got an opportunity here after the goalkeeper parried it. Good handling of the shot by the goalkeeper. Valencia have possession now. They've earned it. Diego Costa. Free kick taken. And that uh, flag is up, it has gone out off the player. Wonderful moment in the match, this worth another view. Rodrigo's goal. And in comes the header. The goalkeeper didn't have to move to make that save. Well displayed by their standards, they're still in the match, but it's not looking good. Remy. In towards Hazard, and he heads it for goal. Terrific header, and a tremendous save. Well, he couldn't have headed it any better, but the keeper was equal to it. Well, the strikers must wonder what they have to do today to find the back of the net. They're up against a top-class keeper here. Diego Costa, terrific tackle. Figuli. Remy. In with the chance. Oh, well reached by the keeper to turn it away. And they're sending the goalkeeper up for the corner. Cahill. Rodrigo. quite catch it properly no he... so it has finished here at 2-0 and a very and good game it you was enjoyed your day here have a safe journey home Big... right so that was our main game today between Chelsea and Valencia and before the game Chelsea and Valencia both unbeaten um 
Valencia having seven out of nine and Chelsea getting the three wins out of their opening fixtures. But it was the team who had the less amount of points before the start managing to get the win. And they did it well, Jay Pearce. Oh, yeah, no, they definitely deserved the win. They were well on for the win today. Just playing more fluent play, quicker, and just not being as as, uh, as sloppy, making less mistakes and uh, keeping the pressure on. Yeah, they they look they did look good today. To be fair, um, Stewart's typical brand of play, where he's just trying to build the play up, be very very careful with what passes he picks out, making sure they're the right ones, taking his time. And Bobbitt was trying to do that to an extent today, but he seems just to be doing it a little bit for too long and not quite getting things done right. You picked up on uh, a chance he had. I think it was when he was one 0 down where he was sort of twisting and turning uh, just outside the box, but he was just a bit too... did, did it for too long. Yeah, no, he literally just... Uh, I believe he was taking a couple of fake shots and just turning backwards and forwards. He had he had a couple of good opportunities just to break away through the defence. He, he'd sold him one or two times and then just cut back again. So he could have just run through and taken a shot, but but no, he, he kept on and, uh, and of course, the Valencia players and uh, Stuart himself caught on and just just predicted what was going to happen next as he's just standing there doing, doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And, um, well, let's have a look at the first goal that Valencia scored. A good goal from Faguli. Yeah, no, Faguli, Faguli got a great, I believe it was a finesse shot into the top right, but it was some well-worked play involving players like Piatti and uh, Danny Prejo. So, it was well worked. Once once again, getting outplayed Chelsea by Stewart. So, just they, they all, the whole game they're getting outplayed. Bobbitt's tried to to match the play, but it just was never going to work. Those two trying the exact same thing when Stewart was playing that style of play so much better. Yeah, he he does have a he does play very very well with that style of play, very cautious in how he picks his passes and he he does make the right passes and the right moves quite a lot of the time. That's why he's up there near the top of the table. But his second goal, you could say, was slightly lucky. The free kick, um, Courtois making the save. But it just fell to Rodrigo. And it's a striker's instinct just to get there before the defenders. And his natural pace and acceleration got there before there. What what did you make of the goal? Was it a free kick beforehand? Uh, yes, I would say it was a free kick beforehand. That wasn't the first time in the game that free kicks were given away in that sort of an area. I believe it was the second time that match. And then he went away to give one away again, Bobbert. So he kept on giving Stuart chances. And... If he keeps giving them free kicks in good areas, well, they've got to convert sometime, whether it be through a spill from Courtois like that, which went straight to Rodrigo, as you said, with the striker's instinct. Just running in, first one there, beat the defenders. Yep, that's right. Uh, right, well, we shall be getting on to the rest of the games, but just a... Quick final roundup on those two sides. Obviously, Stewart was right up there last season. He did a very good job. Um, he's obviously got a better team. Well, has he got a better team this time round? I'm not sure. Um, Bobbitt's not doing so good, but he's definitely got a better side than last year. After four games, I know it's still quite early, but uh, are either of those teams... What Do you think either of them will win the league? I mean, where do you see them both finishing up? Uh, I can see Stewart being with a good chance of winning the league. I can see... I can see Bobbitt's dropping off a bit, competing in the uh, mid mid to top half of the table with Chelsea. But on the comment, I'd say Valencia are the best all-round side, in my opinion. They've, they, they've covered all bases, all similarly rated, no real outstanding players. And they've got a very solid goalkeeper, so it's a, it's a really good team to have. Some people put doubts on it at the beginning of the season. But uh, Stuart, funnily enough, was one of the few people saying, no, they're really good. And he actually got them to uh, to prove it. But I think he's going to be a strong contender for the title. Yeah, that's, that is 
Fair enough. Um, I, can, I can see Stuart being right up there. And you said Diego Alves, uh, their keeper, put in a great shift in that game and possibly got a team of the week performance. Who knows? Um, but anyway, let's get off to the rest of the games in the XRL European Super League. Starting off with how the two Premier League sides who took each other on this week got on. It's Liverpool versus Arsenal. Our first game today comes from Anfield between two Premier League sides, Liverpool and Arsenal. Liverpool having a reasonable start to their title defence under I Love Jigsaws, whereas Arsenal having a bit of a slow start to the season, and that difference in quality showed very early on. After just three minutes, former Chelsea frontman Daniel Sturridge got in on the act and made it 1-0. Within the first 12 minutes... Liverpool had already amassed six shots on goal with plenty on target. This being another one of them. Sturridge getting through on goal, hitting the post. And then Markovic following up with a rebound and a great save from Espina. Liverpool continued to show their dominance in the game. And Balotelli finding Sturridge and he managed to, well, not win, do anything. But got the ball back and... Coutinho finds a great ball into him and Sturridge makes it 2-0 in his second of the match. Balotelli and Sturridge looked very, very good in this game. A very big handful for the Arsenal defence. And it was 3-0. Sturridge getting his hat-trick within 43 minutes. And this game was slipping away from Arsenal extremely quickly. On the stroke of half-time, there was time for another goal. Great movement from Sturridge. Great little bit of skill. And... Gets away from his man, makes it 4-0 by the half-time whistle. The Arsenal fans were already leaving at this point, and after 55 minutes, well, it just got worse. Balotelli getting himself on the score sheet. Uh, it took him 55 minutes, which is a lot longer than his striking partner, but he found himself on the score sheet. Emre Chan then found Coutinho just four minutes later, who ran in on goal, and he did the finish himself. A great finish into the left-hand side of the goal. 6-0 after 59 minutes, and by this stage, Craig Senna, the Arsenal manager, just amassed one shot, and that wasn't on target. This was complete domination by, by Liverpool, and they made it 7-0 after 75 minutes. Balotelli getting his second of the game, but there was still time for eight, and... Th- the Liverpool team delivered to the crowd's expectations, wanting an eighth goal. And Balotelli firing his hat-trick in the game and making it 8-0. Questions have got to be asked of the Arsenal team and the manager in particular. How long will the Gunners faithful stay with their new boss? Our next game comes between two sides who have had reasonable starts this season. Juventus managed by... Uh, Vilexi have had a much better season than last season and Manchester City managed by XRL Burnley have had one of each, a win draw and a loss to the start and it looked as if they could be under pressure right from the off. Tevez getting round and forcing Joe Hart into a very decent save. Just 13 minutes later however, a great little bit of play between Marquisio and Pogba found Tevez a little bit of room inside the box and he made it 1-0 after 20 minutes. Tevez actually finding Pogba there to make it his first. It could have easily made it two if it wasn't for the crossbar, though, in the 25th minute. Joe Hart making a great save there. First chance for Man City. Aguero could have shot there. He pulled it back to David Silva and it was saved. And then Boney really not getting the most of that header. Kingsley Coman running into the second half. And he was a big threat for the home side. And he managed to find Tevez, who made it 2-0. And this game was running away from Man City. There wasn't too much in the game. Juventus having the best of the chances. But Man City were threatening as the game went on. Boney finding Yaya Toure. And he managed to fire in at the near post of Buffon's to make it 2-1. And make it a bit of an interesting finish. And that finish was going to be quite interesting. Because Buffon making a bit of a... Dodgy clearance to some extent. The ball going out to Navas, who then finds Aguero. He cuts in, has a really simple finish round into the far corner. He decides to go to the near corner and hits it very tamely. The full time whistle went though, and there was a dodgy bit of uh, play there. The full time whistle had gone. The keeper thought it was a goal conceded, and Juventus probably got away with one there. Uh, 
But it ended 2-1 to the home side and a great bit of form going into the next set of fixtures for Juventus. Our next game comes between Napoli and Borussia Dortmund. Napoli have been in really good form this season, winning all of their games. And Borussia Dortmund not too far behind. Borussia Dortmund obviously having a very, very strong front line. And Aubameyang getting past the defence with his lightning pace, but his finishing let him down there after the very early stages of the game. Napoli grew into the game and they found themselves 1-0 up. A nice through ball down the middle of the defence and the Borussia Dortmund Achilles heel put them 1-0 down after 14 minutes. Mar Marek Hamstick with the goal. A penalty was given just four minutes later though. Dortmund striker Albemiang being pushed to the ground and a great penalty taken by Marco Royce to add to his impressive tally this season in the league. As we were getting further into the first half, Shinji Kagwa had a chance which was saved by the keeper but fortunate rebounds meant that Jakub Blaszczykowski got, into the, got his name on the score sheet for the first time this season, the Polish international making it 2-1 to the away side. The first half continued and Borussia Dortmund were looking to exert their dominance in on the game. Albemiang having a great chance to make it 3-1 there, heading way over. They'd obviously been practising at the training ground Napoli and they found a bit of luck there to surge through the defenders. And it was a great goal in the end by Napoli, taken right from the training ground. It was... 3-2, they turn the tables at this stage, a great pass over the face of the goal. Some would say it's a bit of a sweaty goal, but it was a it was a sensible thing to do, and it was 3-2, Gabbiadini getting on the score sheet as we're nearing the end of the game, and the second half is definitely in that sort of crucial stage where Borussia Dortmund needs to get a goal. Gabbiadini scored a second for the game. He looked in terrifying form in the midfield, and with just a few minutes later, the minute of madness struck for Fearless, the Borussia Dortmund manager. It then became 5-2. Our final game that we have highlights for comes between PSG and Manchester United in the French capital. And PSG started quite well in this game. Ibrahimovic trying to get the better of Chris Smalling and the keeper De Gea. But De Gea was up to the task in the early stages inside the first 10 minutes. From the resultant corner, Matuidi took the corner. Ibrahimovic tried to get on the header, but the ball falling to David Luiz, who made it 1-0, the Brazilian international, just getting in front of the defender there and just prodding home a loose ball. Smalling very disappointed as he was the one who probably let that slip. From the resultant start-off, though, Dean Rea having a great little bit of skill, running straight through, and, well, the defenders from PSG should have been turned on. David Luiz has probably had his head still in the clouds following him his goal that he scored just a couple of minutes earlier and it was one one all in a just a flash pretty much it was 2-1 about a minute later Di Maria rounding the keeper this time thanks to a Fellaini through ball and he made it 2-1 PSG were just left stranded they can't believe that they're losing this game from what looked an amazing position 1-0 up after the early stages Manchester United continued to threaten and Fellaini could have easily made it 3-1 and put this game to bed after just 28 minutes just firing over the top right hand corner Di Maria got a bit lucky with the bounce of the ball there but he didn't get lucky with his finish he made it 3-1 within inside the half hour and his hat-trick was completed one of three hat-tricks this week scored by players in the XRL European Super League Di Maria then f found a great chance to go and make it four and he duly delivered this guy he, he was moved up front by the manager Ewan and he did a very good job in being right up there. And his pace and skill pretty much got all four goals for Manchester United. This game would have been pretty much out of out of PSG's reach by now with just 10, 12 minutes left of the game. Pastore finding a through ball to Cavani, not quite getting there. Verratti then finding Cavani, who then finished. The Uruguayan international had reduced the lead of Manchester United to just two with 11 minutes to go. With just nine minutes left of the game. PSG will try and get right back into it and reduce that deficit by half. Ibrahimovic shooting straight into De Gea. Poor palm out. A shot from Verratti that hits the post. And then the rebound goes in. 3-4. But that is how it stayed here. And a good win for CUFC Ewan. Right, so after all of those goals and games, let's have a look at the league tables of the XRL European Super League. 
At top of the table, we have SC Napoli, who have won all of their games so far this season with a plus 10 goal difference and on 12 points. In second is XRL Stewart following his win against Chelsea. He's on 10 points with Jigsaws and XRL Bubbles just behind both on 9. Juventus are also on 9 points after their win against Manchester City with Manchester City's rivals, Manchester United, in 6th place following 2 wins consecutively. That's the first time they've done that this season. AS Roma in 7th place on 4 points. On 4 points as well are Manchester City and Borussia Dortmund with the three teams who have failed to win so far, Blackstone Hill managing Atletico Madrid, they're on two points, with Paris Saint-Germain and Arsenal with that horrendous goal difference of minus 18, only mustering one goal so far this season on zero points and dead bottom of the league table. Going into the XRL European Championship, we have Shakhtar Donetsk on top with nine points. No team in this division has won all of their games. Shakhtar on top with nine. Lazio managed by RFC for life in second on eight, eight on eight points. Sorry, joint level on points are Leon managed by Diverse M with Inter Milan in fourth place on seven points. Two teams have won the equivalent of two games, that's six points, and that's Tottenham Hotspur and AC Milan both there, only diff separated on goal difference. Athletic Bilbao managed by Giles are just outside the playoffs on five points, equal then. On points on four are Galatasaray and Everton with C. Palmer managing them. And all of these teams have actually won a game in this division. Zenit St. Petersburg in 10th place on three, as well as Wolfsburg who managed to pick up their first win of the season this week. And Tribal JT rounds off the league table with, a, with the worst goal difference in the league, also on three points. But a very, very close division as you can see with a win propelling you into the playoffs hopes for many of the bottom teams anyway that's been the highlights for week four hope you've enjoyed it we'll be back again for week five's highlights in a few days time and we'll see you next time